A COVID-19 vaccine is being developed in record time. And now the U.S. is getting ready for another history-making moment, one of the largest vaccination efforts it's ever attempted. Pfizer confirming this week it has already started moving its vaccine to distribution centers in the U.S., but a major challenge that company faces, transporting and storing its vaccine at an extremely low temperature. This is a very complicated process in terms of getting it to the point in which it gets into someone's arm. Uh, we understand that these temperatures are different than what we've seen in the past. We're hauling in some cases deep frozen type temperatures minus 70 degrees Celsius. And that's something that the distribution channel has not seen. Train Technologies Thermal King in Bloomington, Minnesota, specializes in refrigerated transport. The company's trucks were used as temporary morgues during the COVID surge in New York City this past spring. They confirmed their vehicles will also be used by several companies distributing the vaccine. Just to be clear, this is not the Pfizer cooler. This is, however, a cooler from a manufacturer that builds your typical pharmaceutical coolers. Uh, we've been reaching out to these manufacturers to help us understand what these solutions look like. And so we can get a better handle on how our product can work in conjunction with this type of product to extend the dry ice life. Engineering manager Bruce Kranz said their trucks could double the life of the dry ice. Inside this box, you have what's called the payload box. That's what this is right here. And the vials would go in, in their own containers, and then those containers would get loaded into this payload box. So one of the challenges here is if you have to re-ice this, the potential of damaging this box, dropping it, or leaving it out too long. If delivery is delayed, the dry ice might have to be replenished, and that's not a simple task. They have a rather tight seal on the lid. I'm going to set that aside. We're going to remove the payload box so that we can get part of the charge of dry ice into the bottom of the payload box. You could transfer this by gloved hand. You could get a scooper. I'm going to pour some of this into the bottom. In a normal process, it would be a little more process centric where maybe the ice is weighed out and you have scoops to load it. Then you load back the payload box. Like I said, this one's instrumented, so it's a little more difficult to work with. It's not easy to maintain minus 70 C, minus 80 C once you're outside the dry ice. The temperature starts to go up rather quick. So time is of the essence once this lid is off. To make things even more complicated, each payload box requires a lot of dry ice, more than 200,000 pounds for the first 6.4 million doses. What I can tell you about getting 300 pounds of dry ice is the first two companies I contacted were taking no new business. Um, the third company was willing to work with me but could only supply me with slab or block dry ice and what's required here is pelletized dry ice. So the pelletized dry ice will turn from a solid to a vapor much quicker than the slab type dry ice. Therefore, you have to get closer to the, the manufacturer of the dry ice to actually have a reliable supply of the pelletized form, which is what's recommended to be loaded into these boxes. Thermal King VP of Cells, Dwayne Cowan, shows us how they track the trucks. As you can see right here, this load is at minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's very important because we want to understand exactly what's going on with that load. With limited supply of the vaccine, no one wants to risk it becoming unusable. So frozen trucking, just one of the complicated steps in the process of getting you a safe and effective COVID vaccine.